Hello, y'all. Uh, welcome to Chapter Select, the very first episode. We had some technical difficulties starting, uh, which is why it's the, you know, the very first episode. It's always bound to happen. I'm Matt, and I'm joined here with my wonderful partner, Ren. Say hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> that was very enthusiastic. We're off to a great start. Um, so for those of you who don't know, which is all of you, Chapter Select is essentially a sort of weekly, probably just whenever we feel like it, book club that's going to be combining, um, talking about, uh, obscure, underrated, underappreciated books, uh, that Ren has read and is interested in, and, uh, mixing it together with a thematically linked video game. Um, so, uh, today we have, uh, The Hex by Rebecca... Dynast Dynast Dynastine uh Knight I don't know which way to pronounce it I don't know if Ren knows better than me I don't oh, she <laughs> does not ugh never mind um yeah uh no Rebecca Dynastine White Knight oh my word and um we're pairing that with Plants vs Zombies which I'm I'm sure you'll see the thematic link uh, more as we uh as we talk about it it's it's totally free form. It's totally like as as chill as can be. It's just gonna be like some nice bit of the game of of the game while we sort of talk about this book. Um, I think uh, let's uh, start the episode as we always start them all zero times that we've done this show uh, by saying how are you today, Ren? How's it going? I'm good. My foot fell asleep. Mm. Um, while I was waiting for you to figure out the game. Yes. Oh my god. That horrible oh. tingly stage. Oh. I, I, don't know. Than... I kinda like the tingly stage. I don't know. Sometimes I kinda revel in it a bit. No? It's... Oh no, the tingly stage literally makes me think like I'd rather just lose the limb. You just you, you just want them to chop it off. Like it's too much. Yeah. Um yeah. No. Th- no, that's that's fair. I can I can understand that. I just I don't know, it's like the tingly stage, yeah, it feels bad, but it also like it makes me feel alive, you know. It makes me feel like there's <laughs> there's, there's joy in the world, and I'm 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 ready to to face anything. It's the when it's like completely numb, and I feel like oh, I just don't have a foot anymore. Like I just imagined I had feet. Um, that mm-hmm. freaks me out. Like because when I need if I need to walk somewhere, I take a step and then I stop like shorter than when I think I was supposed to step. It's it's terrifying. I tell you, it's terrifying. Um. <laughs> It has occurred to me, Ren, uh, is yeah. my, like, audio coming through, like, twice? Because you're, you're looking at the stream? No, it's coming through once Ooh, only. That, see, that's worrisome, because now I'm like, is it actually... Can you click on the link for the stream to make sure the audio is coming through on the final thing? Are, are you doing that, or do you, do you need help? I'm the techie. Ren? Ren? I can't hear you if you're saying anything. Oh, I am saying things. I was oh. saying things. Lol. Is it, is it working fine? Is the, is, the, is the audio coming through on um. YouTube A? I don't mm, I mean I'm personally not getting any like second audio also on the stream on YouTube are we meant to be seeing the start adventure page yeah yeah yeah. that's what we're on well then that's not there <laughs> oh what's on what's on just uh, the like it's, just it's the chapter intro. select yeah oh no oh no we haven't done any intro <laughs> No, that can't be right. Maybe it's like really delayed. Maybe it's really delayed. Oh god, I hope it's really delayed. Oh, okay. No. Is there like a right click? Is it meant to double click it? No, it did a transition. That's crazy. Um I, oh, but then there was no latency when I looked at it originally. Oh no. I don't know how to do that. No source selected. What's that mean? You no, know, this is embarrassing. It actually is working. I'm sorry. It's because I had it paused for so long. <laughs> no, hold on. Actually, oh, no. Okay, okay. Is the uh, is is my audio coming through on the stream?
No, it's working. That's so embarrassing. It's working. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's so fine. But like, so my audio is going through. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Yeah. We did it. Hooray. Okay. All right. That, and that still isn't the biggest like technical challenge of tonight. Okay. Get ready for my tale of woe. So Plants vs. Zombies. This game came out in 2009. This game was like my entire world. I saw like someone do a let's play of this probably around 2010, 2011. Uh, and I, I was like, this is the coolest game ever, which is an interesting opinion for a 13 year old to have, but okay. And essentially, um, you know, it's cute. It was just like released. It was like such a small thing. And its whole history now is like, it got bought out by like EA. They made like two sequels that everyone hated. There's like a side off thing. It's, 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 it got like way too complicated. It's we're, we're going back to some nice, normal 2009 fun um but and this is the crazy thing ea bought the damn game they released like a game of the year edition that i swear to christ it's like they didn't add anything by the way this game won game of the year the year it came out uh i assume on some game awards thing and um yeah so you know it came out in 2009 it's an old game it is on xbox game pass which is the version i'm playing currently because I don't have my original PC copy that I bought as an actual PC copy. I didn't buy it using Steam or Epic Games or something like that. And it's insane that it is not supported. Um, I imagine you get something good out of like good old games or something that they'd probably have some support. But essentially it's like uh, you can't run it on modern PCs at all because it will try to play in full screen and just die. There's no resolution option. I can go to the, uh, to the options page. Let's see if... Um that's working oh yeah also here's you can sort of hear the music in the background um but like yeah it's just full screen and if i clicked this then that um would essentially like um <laughs> yeah if i clicked full screen then it would literally um die it wouldn't work anymore it would just simply break which is insane i mean i mean it's not insane of course it's an old game and like these things aren't sorry oh the music is actually kind of a groove oh it might be a bit disappointing it might be a bit distracting should i turn it down can you hear it no not at all sorry i'm gonna turn it off because it will actually distract me and i won't be able to listen to you but i'll keep some of the sound effects on the for y'all anyway um so I essentially had to go into Windows Registry. I had to really, really, really use that uh, computer science master's degree that I spent four years getting. And I had to basically force it to start in windowed mode. And that is now what we're playing. It's actually crazy that I can't play in full screen. So I have to like really squint at the screen to get it to work. But, oh well. Um, that took about half an hour to get working, which is hilarious. But now it is working and all is well with the world. So. Yeah, I, I guess we uh, should probably get started, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll uh, start adventure. I guess we could, like, play a little bit of the game. Oh, my word! Oh, my hand came out of the ground! <laughs> so scary. Oh, there's probably, like, a cutscene. If that's an option to skip that. Oh, man, spoiling how cool the game's gonna look. Um, jeez. Oh, it's my house. My house does not look like that. Rank can attest. Oh, oh, they're gonna give me a tutorial. Oh my. Why look at that though? <laughs> it's like, I know how to play the game. I actually just made, oh, I made a massive, that was a massive error. I should have put it there. Yeah, that's this, so embarrassing. This is the, this is, oh. oh just always know. put your sunflowers on the, on the back row. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I didn't think, I, I didn't think it through. Didn't think it through. You're going to get distracted by this game. I, I remember when we, we were talking about this concept and we were like, it's going to be great because like Ren can talk about how passionate she is about video game. We'll have like a visual element with the with the game. So with, with, you'll talk passionately about the book. But <laughs> like I'm now realizing, especially because this is like a game that you know and you like, um, you're just you're, you're going to get distracted by it. It's, it's, it's not great. Yeah. Oh, well. Marty, so gross. Mm. Oh, my God. The final wave. No. Okay, once this is done, we're gonna get into this book. Uh, it's a pretty cool book, so. Is it cool in the video game? I don't know. I always thought, oh my word, yeah. In the like 3D shooter 
spin-off, like, this thing looks like a nightmare. Like, I remember seeing, like, the first, like, image of it, and it's, like, this moving in 3D, and this face, like, realized it haunted my, it haunted my dreams. Okay. Uh, would you like to start us off about uh, the book Hex by Rebecca Dynastein Knight? Yes. Okay. So this book, so good. Love. Actually didn't finish reading it for this, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. can, you tell us what, because... uh, can you tell us what page you got to? In case yeah, I got people to want page... to read along at home. <laughs> just in case you want to read along at home i got to page 138 um it's really short it's like 215 pages i definitely could have like rushed to finish it today before this but that just did not happen um but it's okay because i've read it before i read it about a year and a half ago maybe um and i really liked it the first time i'm liking it even better the second time i think that's even possible um yeah basically it's called hex mm -hmm. and it is it's basically about this girl who lives in a house and there's a zombie apocalypse and she's like wow i gotta plant these i gotta I gotta plant these oh these zombies <laughs> they're out they're outside yeah that was funnier in my head um it's called hex it is um about the main character her name is nell barber she is wonderful everything down on my knees i worship the ground she walks on um she's great it's amazing the whole book is um it's written in like a weird combination of like first and second person because it's uh it's her journal but her the entirety of her journal is like being written for and to her um, academic advisor at Columbia, whom she is completely obsessed with. So she says like, I went to see you and we know she's talking about her academic advisor. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so the book basically starts out um, with Nell telling us just like basically who she is. On the first page, she describes herself as being 5'5 five, five and 130 pounds and not being very impressed with that. I was like, I don't know, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> but um, uh, she's got like brown, greasy hair, something like that. And uh, she's just broken up with her boyfriend of two years, Tom. Oh, and, um, Tom. Yeah. So kind of starting at a, we're actually starting at a really low point in um, Nell's life. She's just broken up with her boyfriend, Tom, and also just gotten expelled from her PhD program at Columbia. Um, Nell studies botany. She was in like this lab group that was working to um, basically make like poisonous plants not poisonous there's a lot of like scientific lingo in this book you don't have to know what any of it means to enjoy it because i certainly don't um like she talks about like ribosomes and shit and i'm like i don't know girl um basically she's working on this lab project with a group of other phd students and one of them dies because she's like handling the poisonous plants <gasps> in a way that you're not supposed to do. Oh no. She makes a, a pea shooter and it just like shoots her in the face with a giant No, <laughs> Yeah, no, she didn't have the safety on her pea shooter. So <laughs> <laughs> things took a dark turn Ooh. for her. And <laughs> That's a bad way to go. <laughs> peed to death it's like look at uh, look at look at peed to death uh look at like what's happening <laughs> to these poor zombies like it just happens to you look at like, this giant pee hurtling towards you at like hundreds of miles per hour yeah and it's not a it's not a quick death it's like first you lose your arm oh. and then like I think and then leg. your head Oof. do you lose your leg i don't know let's have a look at this guy Oh, no, okay. No, so, it's definitely just arm oh, and head. Oh, oh, okay. But you do have, like, a couple of seconds left of... 
walking. Yeah, no. Yeah, but apparently a plastic cone on your head can protect you from that. Not for, for some long. <laughs> so, yeah, the story starts out with Nell and her entire lab group getting expelled from Columbia. Um, Damn. Um, in case anyone doesn't know what Columbia is, it's a very good and expensive school in New York. So the entire story takes place in New York City, as uh, all great stories do. I did not know that, so thank you for telling me. Oh, yes, well, yes. So she gets expelled from her school because um, they were being dangerous in the lab and a girl died. So, <laughs> so basically, the story starts out, Nell gets expelled, she's cleaning out her locker, because um, they're like, you gotta get your stuff in, go. <laughs> uh, she's cleaning out her like lab locker, and she takes the seeds that they were like working with, mm. and she's like, I'm gonna finish. Um, I've actually already forgotten the name of the poor girl who died. Oh. She's gone and forgotten. I feel <laughs> gone um, and forgotten. <laughs> Sad. Uh, yeah, I'm like. <laughs> Searching. Her name Rachel Simmons. Got it. Rachel Simmons. Oh, thing. that sounds uh, really familiar. Do I do I know Rachel Simmons? Did she die? Did she <laughs> miss that? Um, yeah. So she steals the seeds they were working with, and she's like, "I'm gonna finish Rachel's work," because she feels like weirdly kind of responsible for Rachel's death, even though it's kind of not her fault, but maybe is. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's how it starts out. Like I said, the whole thing is, um, the whole thing is a journal. So, like, at the end of the very first chapter, also, this is kind of a tangent, but not really. Love a tangent. Chapter you got a tangent already, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, I guess 30 minutes into the stream, but I think the first 15 minutes were, like, nothing. Uh, it's so, not even really a tangent. It's still very book-related. I just want to say that- We're in the zone. I just wanted to say that the book is the book itself is really short. Like I said, two hundred fifteen pages. But also the chapters are really short, mm. um, which I love. I think it's it's so much easier for me to read more of a book when the chapters are short. Because yeah. when a book has like fifteen page chapters, I'm just like I can't do it. I'm not strong enough. I'm not strong um, enough. I can't do it. Literally, I'm like I can't go on. <laughs> Um, so then I, like, will literally read, like, one chapter at a time. But this, this feels so good, because each chapter is, like, two pages on average. Which makes sense, because I guess they, they're, like, diary entries, mm. each chapter. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're, like, short and sweet. Yeah, I was going to say, that really reminds me of um, someone who used to read as a teenager, James Patterson. But I just remembered he's been cancelled, so never mind. <laughs> Screw that guy. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Not for me. Um, thank you. Yeah, I hope this isn't like cringe, but I there are some like really good quotes in the book that I wanted to read. So Oh yeah, no, please read say, them. Yeah, so at the end of the first chapter when she like steals these seeds and she's like, I'm gonna continue this work even though I don't go to school and it's really dangerous. She says, um, little PSA before I read this. I'm really bad at reading out loud. So. She's amazing. Uh, don't 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 anyone judge me. Don't I I was the lies. child left behind. Um she says Rachel's experiment is now my own. I can destroy it or it can destroy me as I please. I please. As with the old work, the new work is for you, Joan. That's her academic advisor that she's completely obsessed with. What isn't for you? More life collected, documented. You'd like that. Wouldn't you like that? I just love it. Um, uh, the whole thing is so. She's like insane. Nell is. It's like this is like Fleabag. If Fleabag was a huge nerd and also like. No, that's it. This no, is... that's it. It's Fleabag. If Fleabag was a nerd. Um... Yeah, it's. I mean, this is essentially just like one big long. Nell talking to the camera and Joan is the sexy priest. Um, yeah, but so great. So that's where the story starts off. And um, 
the whole of the uh, the whole of the progression is just um, it's like little it's little dire entry, so it's like little slices of life. If anyone enjoys searching that into Ao3 when they go to look for fan fiction, you would really enjoy this because that's like it's just perfect little slices of Mel's life. It's amazing. It's basically just like we're gradually introduced to the main. I would say the main story revolves around a circle of... Hold on, I have to count in my head how many of them there are. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven individuals? Hmm. And they all have these, like, really messy, toxic, like, weird relationships with each other. So, um... Yeah. First person we kind of get to know... Uh, is Tom, Nell's newly ex-boyfriend that she was with for years. Uh, she describes him as having, like, really long hair that he wears in ringlets, which I'm like, that was a choice. Um, I'm not a fan of ringlets. <laughs> um, but, you know, to his own, not judging anyone. Um... I've I've always been I mean I I don't judge people by the hairstyles because I'm a good person but that's right fine. well yeah yeah no so she's been with Tom for two years he is a uh, very much like rich kid who has no real like aspirations um yeah he comes from wealth his dad died when he was pretty young he is uh, getting a PhD in like medieval like studies or something like something so stupid something you can never get a job from literally R like, ripped to everyone doing like, listening to this and doing uh, medieval studies <laughs> it's not like not that it's stupid like I'm sure it's wonderful but mm. I mean their career you know. their careers were already in ruins so <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like, for your sake, I hope you also come from money, because I don't think that you're going to find it in the career path you're headed for. Okay. That's just me. Um, and Tom is... Tom is one of Nell's really good friends, and she basically describes, like, that was the problem with their romantic relationship, is that all they really were was friends. <laughs> um, and they weren't ever really suited to being, like together um and i think a big part of that is probably because nell is so so deeply obsessed with her academic advisor in a way that is just so intense and like disturbing but also i absolutely love reading about it um yeah so tom yeah we've got tom hmm. he's he's like this really nervous shy rich kid from New York and he's just like a little loser who likes unicorns and he's he's polite and sweet and Nell is like abrasive and not polite <laughs> and it's like when we see them interact it's like you wonder how these two people ever ended up like being together at all but yeah so that's him. Also, I just want to say that, like, when I read a book, I imagine the characters as, like, actors mm. that I've seen. Yeah, you do um, a bit, a bit, a bit of self-casting. Yeah, a bit of fan casting, I fear. Mm. Um, so I just want to say that if anyone's, like, wondering how I picture Tom, he definitely looks like, and I don't know this actor's name, I'm looking it up right now. He looks like, if anybody's seen First Kill... <laughs> Mm, I don't know. Like... Have I seen First Kill? Has someone oh made me yeah. watch all of that? Mm, well, our love story could be kind of gory. <laughs> Far from boring, we'd need at a post apocalypse. <sighs> Why did I, I love watch that all of that show? To, you're trying to spin this narrative that I mm. made you watch it when literally you would ask me. Do you want to watch First Kill? Only when it was the watch... final episode. I had to know how it ended, okay? I had to know if the lesbian, like, vampire and vampire <laughs> hunter found love. And did. they... And... No, they did not. Um, spoiler alert. Yeah, they... They're not making a season oh, two, yeah. so... 
Yeah, they're just forever broken up. Uh, yeah. Something to really think about. Something to really think about, you know? Uh, I don't yeah. know if I placed that mine in the right place, but we're gonna we're gonna find out. What is that mine even? Oh, is that the one that like blows up? Yeah, but I think yeah, it needs to go. That's what a mine does. Yeah, that's so <laughs> it nice. needs to go red first. Oh, he's eating it. Oh, you know what? That might work. Oh, sick. That worked. Um, yeah. So if anyone's seen first kill, I imagine Oliver, the um older vampire brother, mm. to look to be Tom. He's got like this like greasy long hair. No offense to Dylan Mc. Namora, just looked him up. Just looked up his name. Uh, no offense to him. I'm sure he's wonderful. Just the long hair. It's giving the same kind of weird vibes that Nell describes. Um, Tom's long hair is having. Oh, speaking of Nell, I've also kind of fan casted her as looking like Charlotte Ritchie. Ignore the fact that Charlotte Ritchie is British. Um, hmm. well. Kind of like. I mean, British people can play people from other countries, no? Yeah, but she just, like, kind of looks a little British. Oh, I see. You can just see it in, like, something about her, like, jaw. It's like you know that she's not about to say, hey, she's about to say, hello. <laughs> um, you know who it's... looks like that? And we realized how wrong we were was, uh, is, um, oh my word, what's her Oh, name? Tessa Thompson. Tessa Thompson. We were like... She's British, right? When uh, she was on Westworld, we were, we were going through West Westworld and she showed up and it was like, oh, that's actually... When we saying that was like a terrible and American accent and then we looked up and she's Yeah, actually we were from... like, wow, she's, she's doing an California. awful American accent right now and then she's literally an American. Hmm. So um, but she she looks British. Like, I can't explain it. Yeah. Something... You know, what I, you know what I think it is, actually? And this is no offense, British people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. I'm here. I'm representing. You know it. But I think, and I just want to say that I think Charlotte Ritchie and Tessa Thompson are both so pretty. Like, so like if I got a chance, like I would take it. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, but lovely thing for your boyfriend. A, like, here. There's, there's just like a little quality of like force in their faces. It's like, just like, you know how, like, all people kind of look like animals. I would say, like, British people, most of them kind of are giving horse. <laughs> like, oh, am I wrong? I mean, my laugh just kind of proved that. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> you just, do like, I mean, give off horse? Huh? What kind of horse do I give off? <laughs> I don't think you give off horse, to be mm. fair. I feel like you're the exception i think the that, irish, like, the one... irish genes are like yeah, offsetting i was it. just gonna say that like one fourth of irish in you mm -hmm. like came and did what needed to be way done. to oust um. how much irish is in me thanks thanks for that <laughs> i'm gonna lose I'm my sorry. card now i've been lying to everyone yeah. it was more than that just in, he... just in case he ever says on this stream i'm <laughs> irish just know that it's one fourth i would okay? like to just i would at that. least like to say i'm not one of those people de descended from an irish immigrant who's like i'm irish i'm like no i'm british i was i, I was grown here um i was, I was taught to hate here. myself but i was grown here you know <laughs> <laughs> like a oh plant like a plant. plant like a plant see how that all came full circle so in a way that wasn't even a tangent yeah um so the next character that we're really introduced to, and this is, I mean, other than Nell and Joan, this is definitely like my favorite character. I guess this is my third favorite character. Um, so we have Mishti, who is Nell's ex-roommate and best friend. Uh, she is, she's wonderful. She, oh, I actually forgot. She's like, she's studying biochemistry. And um, just for reference, she's 26 and Nell is 31. Tom um, is who can say. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, she's wonderful. She's Indian. She's the daughter of a doorman and um, some sort of fancy scientist. Um, and she's like described as completely beautiful which so is tom by the way even though tom lacks confidence she does describe him as like being 
very conventionally attractive, but in like a kind of boring way. Um, yeah, so we have Mishti, Nell's best friend. She's beautiful and like confident and really smart and like just unstoppable. And um, I have fan casted her to look like Simone Ashley. Is that her name? If I just messed that up, I will be so sad. But I haven't. It is Simone Ashley. Yeah, I've fan casted her in my head as Simone Ashley. Um, yeah. And so we have Mishti, Nell, Tom, and then we have Carlo, who is Mishti's boyfriend. He's like new. He's like very new. <laughs> <laughs> He's not solidly part of the pack. Um, he is like a super rich guy from Spain. Ah. Uh, so he's he is white, spicy white. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, his family moved from like Spain to Argentina to Texas, specifically oh. to Houston. Oh, Houston to represent. <laughs> and then to Austin because his dad is some sort of like very fancy businessman, and he went to like very fancy like all boys schools and like did horseback riding and like fancy rich people stuff and Nell describes him as like completely personality -less. he's just he's just a pretty pretty face but he I think he's like a business major he goes to business school anyway whatever he's I don't care about him I don't care about him, and I'm there. not talking about him anymore. That's the end of that. Okay, so we have Carlo. Then we have Joan. Joan is Nell's academic advisor. She's 41 to Nell's 31. Um, Nell met her five years before the events of um, this book. Uh, and she was just like... But then she was just an assistant professor... She's, like, basically a rock star in the botany world. She's got, like, a book that was, like, a... What? Oh, just, like, rock star. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. Um, <laughs> she's got, like, a book that I believe, if I'm remembering the specific sentence, Nell says it sold, like, 8,000 copies in its first week, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And she is harsh, she is severe, she's mean, and her relationship with Nell is so problematic and toxic and just, like, wonderful. It's so special to me. The way that they talk to each other and the way that these two characters interact, it's just so good. So good. Um, and yeah, Nell's complete and utter obsession with Joan is, I mean, it's the whole reason for this diary. She says, like, I'm writing this diary to keep track of the stuff I do because you told me to do something. It's just it's so. It's like meaningful to you. Oh, so, so good. It's <laughs> so good. Um, yeah. Also, I have fan casted Joan. Oh, yeah? As well. I don't remember this actress's name, but I'm looking. It's Emma Caulfield. Emma that's who I imagine. Caulfield. Yeah, that's who I imagine plays Joan. I know her from um, this show called Life Unexpected. Mm. <laughs> It was like canceled after two seasons, um, but I enjoyed it. Um, but apparently, she was Anya Jenkins on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, mm, I and seen that. Susan Keats on Beverly Hills 90210. So, oh wait, oh wait, you'll know her from this because apparently she was in Wandavision. Oh, you watched that didn't you? Yeah, I watched that. Who's she in Wandavision? What's the character name? Sarah Proctor slash Dottie Jones. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, sure. I think I know. 
That's a that's a side character. I mean, I've also I've just admitted on stream that I've seen one division. How embarrassing! Uh, <laughs> I haven't. And I've but... also just admitted on sc on screen that I'm I'm not a fan of one division, which is even more of a death <laughs> sentence. Um, I'm sorry, folks. It was okay. Uh, <laughs> You're on YouTube. You should know what I mean. It, it didn't go as far as it could have. Sorry, that's a the whole other thing. Um, I'm sorry. What? I I had completely forgotten that you had to choose your plants, and I'm now like, this decision's gonna ruin my life. <laughs> I guess I don't need the potato mines, but they're good in a pinch. Oh no, and they're cheap, and it's not cheap. Mm. I feel like when I used to play that, I never chose the little Venus fly trap. Man. Yeah, I think it's bad. I think it's not needed. Um, and I'm not gonna. Wait, does that does the Venus fly trap only work once? No, it it works more than once. Okay. But it, but it, but it's as it's chewing, it can be eaten. Mm. Not ideal. Oh, already terrible start to this. Uh, this is the one I lose. Uh, <laughs> mm. Anyway, sorry. Carry on. Um, oh yes. What's her face from One Division? Yes, that's why. That's what I imagine Joan to look like. She's yeah. She's powerful. She's intense. She's professor, and she was Nell's academic advisor, like I said, until Nell was spelled but nell still goes to see her all the time because she's you know obsessed with her and i think that's fine i don't think there's really anything wrong with that um it's so this book is so great because ah, sorry i just love it so much <laughs> this okay so basically in the story nell before she was expelled she convinced Mishti and Tom to take uh, one of Joan's classes. So they're still taking Joan's class. So all of them are like in this weird like relationship and they're all like weirdly obsessed with Joan but in like different ways and for different reasons and it's really interesting. Mishti is like obsessed with getting Joan's approval, but she hates Joan. It's oh. because it's like Mishti is so beautiful and wonderful that like she's never experienced someone not liking her before, mm. and Joan openly despises Mishti. A, a lancer, if uh, you will. Yeah. <laughs> like a classic so, foil. A classic foil. Um, and so Mishti's like approach to sort of gaining Joan's respect in a way or just like proving to Joan that she's I don't know that she's like powerful capable smart something I don't know um is that she starts sleeping with Joan's husband <laughs> classic um plus, I mean that's obviously what you do when no, yeah. I want the respect of one of my teachers that's what I go for. That's the number um, one solution to the problem. Yeah. Joan is married to a horrible human being named Barry. Mm. Who Nell, I mean, Nell just really goes in on him. Like, she never misses an opportunity to talk about how much she hates Barry. Um, he is, he comes from money. Joan doesn't. So Nell basically says, like, the reason Joan married Barry is because she says something like she didn't marry him for the money, but she married him when she was young and the money made her feel something she had never felt before. Um, so yeah, Barry and Joan have a very weird relationship. And the fact that it's like not good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just really, Barry also works at the school. He's like associate, I'm just making up words. He's, <laughs> he's like, the he's associate. an associate. He's just, he's associated he with an associate. them. He's associated with Columbia University. <laughs> um, he does something for like, oh my gosh, I actually found it. Uh, he's the associate director 
Does Associate Director Barry Eslin serves the first year area of the Columbia undergraduate residence halls, and it is his job, that's in italics, mm. to be on good terms with the students. It is his job. <laughs> um, Fair play. Yeah, so he's basically the Associate Director of the, whatever, residence halls, um, but also he, like, flirts with all the students, female Oof. students, I, yeah. and he's really creepy and like a loser and uh not good enough for joan according to nell and uh yeah he because mishti is beautiful he like obviously is always drooling all over her uh and um mishti and joan actually have this like really weird conversation where uh it's like christmas there's like a department-wide christmas party and Mishti has just gotten a B minus or B plus, some kind of B something on Joan's exam. And she's like crushed because she's never gotten anything lower than an A in her life. And, um, you know, so she's mad at Joan. And, uh, you know, words are exchanged. Mishti says something like, maybe I should accept your husband's offer to dinner. And Joan says, can it be Thursday night? I really want him out of the house on Thursday night. Um, so it's like a really, it's a really weird dynamic between the two of them. Also, I forgot to mention, um, Joan starts sleeping with Tom. Um, because why not? He's pretty and also there. Classic. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I think basically that's, our whole cast of characters. I actually haven't fan casted Barry. Mm -hmm. um, he's the only one. Oh, I forgot you to get, say uh, my. Um... Yeah, Bill Hader to do him. Isn't that his show, Barry? I, I don't know. I was trying to think of like creepy middle aged white men. I feel like Bill Hader kind of fits that vibe. <laughs> um, I don't know who no, Bill Hader is. Is that bad? He's the <laughs> SNL guy. Nope. No? Okay, I'll Google. Yeah, he's in everything. No. He's in he's in it chapter two. Oh, this guy! Yeah, this guy. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, he could definitely be a Barry. Hmm. Well, that, he he has a show, I believe, where he's he, called. Oh Barry. yeah, it's called Barry. Yeah, yeah. I see that now. Mm. It's 2018. It's still going. I'm pretty sure season two's coming out. I haven't seen any of it. I heard it's very good. Yeah, it, it says it's been going since 2018. Oh, I see. I see. I thought you were like it was in 2018. I'm like, mm, I'm pretty sure it's still coming out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot to say, but also my um my fan cast for Carlo is Alex Gonzalez. Mm. If you try to Google that, the first thing that will come up is some baseball player. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actor. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's my, my fan cast choice for everyone. Hmm. But the story revolves around these, what, seven, six central characters. And it's all about their just, like, really weird dynamics with, obviously, Nell, because the whole thing is from her point of view. Hmm. It's just, it's so well written. I'm not like an English major. I couldn't like tell you about like all the literary devices she utilizes or whatever. But yeah, I would no say way. like, yeah, but I would say like the style in which she writes is like so profound in its simplicity, if that makes sense. Like, it's so great. There's a chapter where the whole like first paragraph is just like this giant run-on sentence and it's, it's so good. I'm actually gonna read it if that's okay. That's fine, no, read it. <laughs> All right, again, I'm not good at reading out loud. So if anyone oh, makes fun of me, I will, I will feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, um, Nell Barber, I don't know why I feel I need to call her by her full name. Nell is from Kansas. Uh, I think she mentions in the first chapter, like, she's the daughter of a Jewish father and a Christian mother. We're, like, very simple people, never wanted for anything more. Um, you know, that's, that's that. Um, 
Yeah, but this chapter I love. It starts out, the chapter is called Kansas. And what I'm about to read, this is all one sentence. She says, When you grow up in Kansas, wearing very large shorts, thinking not very much of yourself, thinking mainly of your knees, looking mainly at your knees, your face a frisbee that can't fly, your teeth buck, your eyebrows rectangles, your forehead more than half of your face, your shirts shapeless, your shape shapeless, your Kansas shapeless, your lust absent, your legs bowed, your arches flat, your chest flat, your ears your only curves, your ears never pierced, your denim never dazzled, your sneakers white, your socks white, your teeth turquoise with rubber bands, your cheese orange, your milk whole, your bread wonder, your luxury a tuna casserole, your pale and neon pale, your fantasy to race a Mario Kart over the desert and into the final oasis, your earthly oasis a salted pretzel, your solitude total, your urges not even visible to you on the clearest days at the farthest horizons, your blank magnificent, your inertia wild and authentic, you're nothing, your preference, and then into somebody walks a Joan. This sudden hero can really take control. It's just so... I don't know why I just love that really, really long sentence. But it oh, is like the cool. root of her... Yeah. Her, like, obsession with Joan is... Throughout the whole book, Nell describes herself as being so plain. Even, um, she says to Joan once when... She's like, oh, Tom and I broke up. And Joan is like, I didn't even know you and Tom dated. And Joan says something about, like, it's strange that her and Tom dated. It's strange that her and Mishti are friends. And Nell says, I'm plain and salty, so the pretty ones like to chew on me. It's such a... I don't know, it's, it's so relatable. Old. Yeah, it's... There's like this, I think, when you think of yourself as so completely average and so unexciting there is this like desire to surround yourself with people that are other and i think that is like just the whole hmm. essence of this book At the very beginning nell talks about opposites and it's her it's the root of her whole thing with plants her whole desire to take poisonous plants and make them not she's like obsessed with the inverse of things it's like, oh, there's a really good quote about it, and I'll find it. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah, the whole thing is about... No, Oh, I found it, I found it. I'm going to read it. Sorry. to do it to you, but I got to read this. <laughs> hate to do it to you. <laughs> she says, How undercutting, how generous of the world to provide each thing with its inverse, to test each version of life we choose with a version of its opposite. How perverse and unpeaceful. I want more than anything to love the choice I make. Love it with abandon, proudly, building a temple upon it. How can you do it? How can you really give yourself up and praise anything when the world is too balanced to allow for a lopsided devotion? <laughs> when each thing is always reckoning with its anti-self. Perhaps they're all the same, your various choices, and committing to one is the same as committing to any. Your only job is to build a temple. So good love i think that's also just like it's just something ah, you have to just like read it because her her relationship with joan and her obsession with her is so visceral and so like so intense and it's like it's crazy because if you were to just like i don't know if you were to just look at this like if this were a movie and you were to just watch it from anyone's perspective but Nell's. You would say, oh, Nell is insane. Nell is just like a weird student who's obsessed with her teacher, who's got like a crush, but it's like, it's, it's so much deeper and, and more exciting than that. It's it's more real than that, you know? It's, it's so great. I mean, it's not even like, is Nell even romantically interested in Joan? There's a conversation where she talks to Tom and he's like, you know, what's the deal with you and Joan? And she says, I want to serve her. And he's like, you know, are you being religious or romantic? And she's like, isn't wanting to serve someone romantic? And he's like, it can be. And it's just so, <clears throat> it's so good. 
but it's also so gay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. A good prerequisite for a book. Yeah, I mean, I find it really hard to read anything that's not gay, because it's just like, I don't care. Don't care, didn't <laughs> ask, you know don't what I mean? Don't care, did not ask. <laughs> and it's just... So good. It's so... So wonderful. And to hear, like... There's something... There's something so interesting about the way that women see other women. Mm. And, and it's it's just captured so perfectly in this book. Because I think when you read, like, you read romance novels that are hetero, Romeo, um, not that I do, but it's like, Some of oh, us I do. love... <laughs> <laughs> there are dozens of us! <laughs> Um, you know, it's like, oh, I love her or I love him because she's beautiful or because she's smart. You know, she's got pretty hair. She's got pretty eyes. But, you know, Nell's like, I love Joan because she's mean. I love her because, you know, she doesn't shave her legs. Like, it's just so like, it's not things that you would think of as like reasons why you would find someone else so captivating or reasons why you would entranced by them but that's that's just so real and so what it's like it's just it's so good i feel like i can't even do the book justice i feel like you just kind of have to read it oh so good and then also it's like so good and it just it asks all these like questions about love and about you know about know like what is right there's a scene where nell sees a she's like in the library and there's a window it's like slightly open and the wind is coming through and blowing the curtain in this really beautiful way she says i want to take a picture of this then it feels sort of counterintuitive you know the reason this is beautiful is because it has this motion and by taking a picture i'm robbing it of what makes it special <laughs> and so she's like what is a photograph of love if not marriage? <laughs> God damn. So that is, good. That is so good. You know, that really reminds me of um uh I did see this on Tumblr the other day. Ooh, that's yeah. how you know it's deep and it's real. Yeah, I know. It was basically someone's looking for this quote that they loved and oh my god, am I actually gonna find this? <sighs> you know what? I'm gonna find it before I read it out because I'm like the actual <laughs> The original thing, it's so good, and like, it might make you cry, I'm, I am sorry. Um, it might make me cry? I mean, it made me cry when I read it, so. I do cry Yes, quite that's easily. right, fellas. Boys do cry. <laughs> Boys also do crime. Like, 95% of it, I believe, is the statistic, so. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Mm. Sorry to leave Crazy Dave here. L used to love his little design with the eye. Um, <laughs> and like and the, the pot on his head, and he and he was just like a nice, fun little character. I mean, it's not great to be like, he's mentally ill. Lol, hi, I'm mentally ill, Dave. It's like mm, okay, um, but you know, he's like sweet and nice, and he gives you plants, and he wants to help you. And then the second game, he's like the pivotal like part of the plot. He has a time machine. I think he turns evil. I can't remember, but like what? <sighs> rooting for him are you right. still looking for your quote yeah 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 i have to get to like where i found it um while you're looking can i just say no you can talk 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 away talk away talk, talk, talk away okay um just something else about i really like i don't think i can actually stress enough how 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 like i, don't know, I just want to like bite the book it makes me feel so many things uh, in terms of nell and joan no, they're they're and they're the thing is that the interactions they have with each other are rarely ever good. They're rarely ever nice. Joan doesn't say any nice things about Nell, and Nell is a sarcastic bitch to Joan. There's a part where Nell says, "I'm starting to think I hate you. I chased after you as if you were my mother." Like it's oh, there's just this. I don't know. I think this is like one of those things. 
when it's like someone watches Fleabag or they watch Bojack Horseman and they're like, I relate to this main character so much. And then the people around them are like, oh, cool, seek help. Um, Cause you shouldn't, mm. um, but I do. I just, just know what that feels like. This like, oh, this like this yearning for someone, for their like respect, for their, them to like need you as much as you need them. There's a line somewhere where Nell says, I just want you to admit that I make you possible. It's just like, it's, it's so, it just takes over everything, like all your thoughts. And I just get it. I know exactly where she's coming from. I think she needs to go to therapy and maybe I do too, but like, it's so great. It's so good. Like Rebecca Diner Stein night. Props to you if you ever happen to come across this video. <laughs> mm. You're amazing. Imagine, imagine if the author like saw this and she was like, "You're completely misinterpreting." Like mm. I, that wasn't me. <laughs> and, and also, Plants vs Zombies terrible video game. Uh, I hate this. Um, I hate. I've, I found it. I found the thing. <gasps> it's uh, it. it's from the New York Times Tiny Love Stories 2020. Uh, it's called A Bookmark Near the End by Julia Nicole Camp. It's a poem. Um, okay. I think, or maybe just a story. He loves history. You know what? Hang on. Oh, shit. I can't, I can't turn down the music. Oh, well. Wait, I've heard this before. Oh, have you? Still don't, read it. I actually I'll, I'll don't, I don't know how it goes, but that mm. first line, I'm like, oh, I've read that first line before. Yeah. <laughs> he loves history. He wants to write a biography about John Quincy Adams. I, shamefully, knew almost nothing about John Quincy Adams. So I went online and bought every biography of him I could find. One day he called me, claiming that we wouldn't work out long term. He said he loved me, but that we had different interests. What does love mean to you? I said. That's an impossible question, he replied. I, however, find love to be quite simple. Love is a stack of biographies on my nightstand with a bookmark near the end. So oh, good. It's too good. I'm actually very glad that you read that before because when I read that when I when I read that, my first thought was Ah, mental anguish. And then my second <laughs> thought was, Ooh, Ren would really enjoy that. And then my third thought was, I probably shouldn't give Ren some mental anguish <laughs> if I'm a good boyfriend. Oh, thank you for looking out for me. Yeah. Um, and mental anguish. Mm. Um, oh, I mean, I was willing to do it live on stream, so that's not great. So, uh, I mean, but that's ideal. different. That's for content. Yeah. Um, mm. Hashtag content. So good. Actually, <sighs> there is... So this book is separated into two sections. Uh, the first one starts in September, and then the second one is about halfway through the book. It turns to December, and Nell says, like, Oh, I finished that entire first journal, and now I'm moving on to a second one. Um, but the second section of the book starts out with a little poem, and it's like, ah, oh, love. It's also just like, it's, just read it. It's by William Carlos Williams, doesn't have a title. It says, we lived long together, a life filled, if you will, with flowers, so that I was cheered when I came first to know that there were flowers also in hell. Oh, so good. So cute. <laughs> so, so good. good. It just like, I feel terrible because I want to do this like really like in-depth analysis of this, only that I'm not a junior in high school anymore and I don't remember how to do that. <laughs> I mean, you could do the reading, but also it's not really that necessary on there. Um, yeah, but there's just like, yeah. Um great their the relationship between joan and nell is so captivating i seriously like 10 i don't even want to like say any spoilers because i'm like i actually want people to read it because it's so good hmm. and you know it's good because on the cover of this book uh, where it has like you know the little reviews from like famous people whose opinions matter um there's a quote from um <laughs> now i've forgotten her name and i'm like i love her jenny slate there's a quote from Jenny Slate about how good this book is. And if anyone likes Jenny Slate, then you know. <laughs> um, but it's so good. But, um, yeah, there's a... There's a quote in here. Um, 
it's just I mean yeah so much of it is about Nell's like insecurity to herself it's weird because she's she doesn't seem insecure in the way that she talks about her well she it's like you read it and it's like obviously the audience can deduce this is an insecure person right mm. she mostly just talks bad about herself how she's not pretty or confident or as you know whatever as Mishti or as Tom or as anybody else um but she doesn't seem all that like bothered by it she's just like this is a simple fact I'm not as good as everyone else um and it's but it's so very clear that like her unhealthy obsession with Joan is is rooted in it and uh she says the person who believes in you is the most dangerous person you know the person who believes in you can unbuild you in an instant damn and it's just there's, yeah I mean it's it's all the whole book is just Nell living her life and being a, a broke ex university student planting poisonous plants in her apartment and trying to get them to grow so she can you know cure them mm. and just just begging for this woman's approval while this woman like has sex with her ex-boyfriend Jesus and it's just sad there's a there's a chapter called behind and it opens with Tom in quotes saying from behind and then Mel says what and he says I fuck her from behind talking about Joan <laughs> It's it's a great chapter, but it takes place in a Chinese restaurant where they're getting dinner. Mm. And eighteen Nell's... plus kids, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this book is not for kids. Although I don't know yeah, how. You, any I was about to say you kids. definitely probably read it when you were a child. Uh... No, I read it a year and a half ago. Oh, okay, good. You've read a lot of like inappropriate books. I feel. No, I did. I did. As a kid, <laughs> I read some books that were so bad like books are like i remember one of the books i read for a kid i won't talk about the plot because it's honestly that bad but <laughs> i think back in, on it now and i'm like i wouldn't even want to reread that today like that's a little too mature for me now <laughs> present day me is not prepared yeah no like that's gonna poison my mind i fear <laughs> um yeah it's so good i actually i'm gonna read the first part of that Sure. Because it's a really good one. He says, from behind. Stop. But you asked, I fuck her from behind. We were sitting in an empty Chinese restaurant. A speaker above the door was playing a wind instrument I could hardly hear, but the sound moved through my veins like a sleeping pill. I couldn't stand up and walk out and break that piece. Tom's ever longer hair swayed under the ceiling fan. Yet I asked. I'm sorry I asked. She really likes it. It's as if all my ambivalence toward him in bed was were coming back in the form of a viper. As if he now had the evidence to prove his desirability. As if I'd been wrong to not want him and he'd build his case. <laughs> she keeps asking for more and more. We finish and she wants more. You must be very satisfying, I said, ten cold sesame noodles dangling from my lips like a car wash. Paused. Known, I started to cry. I don't know why I love that image of her just like noodles hanging out of her mouth in an empty Chinese restaurant sat across from her ex who's like having sex with her ex-academic professor and she just starts crying it's great it's a great chapter it's a great book and all the dialogue is written in that way by the way mm. very like I don't even know I don't even know how again I'm not like an English major I wouldn't know how to like read the right words to describe that it, it's it's great it's like I said before, it's so profoundly simple, the way that it's written, and even like the description of the characters, I feel like it's not very, I don't know, I feel like it's not very flowery in its wording, hmm. which is ironic. I mean, there there are some like really, you know, beautiful lines in here. Like I'm not, like not saying it's not beautifully written, because it really, really is. Hmm. Um, like this quote I love I just randomly found that I had highlighted it in here but um Nell you know is talking about her career or her studies in botany and she says 
I wanted to study the harshest, grossest facts about the world's prettiest organisms. It just, I uh, love. It just goes into that whole theme in the book about inverses and everyone's inverse and and the way her whole thing with the plants is um i don't know it's like a metaphor is paralleled with her thing with joan she, she wants to take something that is quote unquote poisonous well obviously the plants are poisonous but you know she wants to take something that is harsh and not good for you and whatever and she wants to boil it down and make it good <laughs> um so so great but yeah, I would like the description of the characters is so, so simplistic, and yet so, so perfect. It just feels like all the more real. You know, how sometimes when you like read a book, it's like the language is too flowery to the point that it's like can't even be emotionally invested in this because it's so like. It's just a bit, it's just a bit much. Oh yeah, I totally know what you mean. Yeah, like, I hate when books take themselves too seriously. Hmm. And I think you can, like, tell when an author takes themselves and their work too seriously and they think too highly of themselves. Mm. I feel like you can feel that in the writing and it just becomes less real, less... You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just... Yeah, it's like, um, it. Charles Dickens... If I'm wrong, I'm thinking Charles Dickens, is really, his work is really wordy because he was literally paid by the word. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like... He, and, and, and like, obviously he wasn't just like, oh, I'm paid by the word. I'm just going to add up a ton of words. He was like, oh, I'll write in a way that will suit me writing as many words as humanly possible. And I feel like when you're, when you're reading something and you're like, this feels like Charles Dickens. If Charles Dickens didn't know what to do with all those words. <laughs> Uh, yeah. that's when it's like, they take themselves very seriously. They're like, oh, I'm a proper writer. I have to like write like this, like the great writers. And it's like, no, this is, this is bad. I'm not entertained here. I'm... Yeah, no. Um, to be fair, I don't really like Charles Dickens. No, I, I know. I, I, yeah, I, I'm aware. No. Yeah, no, I got the feeling from that that you did. And I was like, Ugh, I'm not an intellectual. I don't like, wait, imagine I say this and like, this isn't even by Charles Dickens, but in high school we had to read great expectations no that's Charles that's Dickens him. yeah I hated it didn't get past chapter four I was just like don't care didn't ask like genuinely I just don't give a crap about is it a little boy I don't first of I've all never, I was like, I've never read it male... I don't know <laughs> OT I was like male protagonist don't care didn't ask <laughs> plus you're a man yeah I'm like I don't think Charlie Charlie, Charlie Dickens which is definitely his name uh, you know, wrote a lot, a lot about a lot of female protagonist. I mean, I guess in Oliver Twist and in his, uh... Oh, wait, that's a spoiler. Um, <laughs> there's a female spoiler protagonist Spoiler for now. Oliver Twist? I don't know. Has he been out for, like, over a hundred years? Maybe I've been out for over a hundred years. You don't know, like... I'm just saying, that's like saying, like, Oh, yeah, and then at the end of, you know, Titanic... Don't. when the Oh, sank, don't do it, don't somebody, do it. Someone will complain. Like, oh, somebody's like "Ooh, spoilers it's like what how could you not know the boat in the titanic like that's not spoilers. oh okay that's yes in general but, yeah. like, but also that's especially bad because it's like a historical event um it's kind of well actually no it's not i was about to say it's kind of like spoiling the end of les mis and i'm like no it's not the same at all because no one cares about that specific part of french history apart from i assume the french and french historians <laughs> Yeah, but that's like if I like said yeah, and then like nine eleven happened, and someone was like, "Whoa, spoilers!" <laughs> Whoa, hang on, just a minute. I haven't got to that part yet. All right, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still in the eighties. Things are pretty okay. I was very attached to the twin towers as characters, and now <laughs> you're telling. <laughs> I guess the, I don't think the twin towers would have come into the story, but I actually have no idea when they were built. Um, I, feel I like don't know anything about them. The more we them. talk, the more I'm like, someone, some weirdo is going to be like, this isn't set too soon. <laughs> too soon too to be soon. talking about this so casually. And I'm like, one of us wasn't even born. <laughs> it was me. It was you. <laughs> when I existed. I was a fetus. I was uncooked. I was raw. <laughs> Live on stream, everybody. Here all week, but also not because I need to sleep at some point. Um, I'm actually kind of done talking about the book. Like, 
there's I want to talk so much more about the plot, but it might I, be better well, for when you finished it. Is that? Yeah, I want to finish it and then talk about the plot and the resolution and how I feel about it. I think. Sure. Oh, I feel bad because I feel like I didn't really say that anything very interesting about it. But no, you said so much stuff. I was I was captivated personally. Yeah, I think that's because you're dating me. No, I genuinely <laughs> was. Okay. Okay. I mean, I have to finish this level either way, so... Oh, that's awkward. Are you on the final wave? Uh, no. See, we're here. Um, so... Oh, I see. Still waiting on that. Um, also, oh, I low-key... Is... Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, something about this is kind of dark. Like, that zombie that was reading the newspaper. Sad. Like, was he just, like, an old man reading his newspaper when he was turned into this undead being? I don't know. You know, what... I have to... you know what we really have to examine is, like... Why are all these people dressed the same? Like, what was there just like a giant fashion crisis at the same time? Um, oh my gosh, or maybe this is like some sort of job uniform. Like, there was just some sort of accident at like oh. their job. Um, oh, this guy, he's not having a great time. I'm gonna dig him up and take him into the house and replace him. I love the little faces. I mean, on all of them, but like this, the, the, the potatoes, I remember especially loving as a kid. I was like, oh, he's a little potato, he's happy. He's a little happy potato. Little happy He's potato. getting home. The mushrooms, I don't care about. I actually hated the mushrooms as mm. a kid when I played this. Yeah, the, like, the night them. level I remember being like, oh, I don't want things to change. Oh, no. I also was like, I hate change. But then the pool level. Ooh, too good. The water. Yeah, the, the water stuff. That's a good. Yeah. That was really good. I was like, never mind. Change can be a good thing. I feel like I specifically remember never using the sunflowers after these guys came along. That feels wrong. Oh. I mean, they're only 25. I Sorry. I didn't really like those. I feel like I stuck with my sunflowers. That's I bad. was like, the sunflowers have been with me from the beginning. <laughs> I'm not about to switch up just because I have money now. <laughs> I got money. I don't know what to do with all of this stuff. I guess just like replace these guys. Oh wait, what are the graves for? Oh, the the zombies come out of them. Oh, I'm just like confused because it's like, at what point did I bury people in my yard? <laughs> and they also sort of appear there. Like, it's kind of yeah. strange. I guess put one there. What sort of reverse grave <laughs> heist is going on? Oh, I love this music. I'm so sad you can't hear it. Oh, you know what? I think I need to like enable like audio streaming or whatever on Discord so you can see it. But it's yeah. it's it's kind of jazzy, kinda you know. Cool. It's kind of a boss and over beat. It's not a boss and over beat. That's a completely different kind of beat. Um, mm -hmm. Gosh, I think I hear my cat scratching at the door. Oh no, poor November. November is. Can I let her cat. in? Of of course you can. Um, okay. Yeah, we should do every every streaming couple. They've got a cat. That's a big thing. So we gotta we gotta really hype up the cat. <gasps> oh my god, I forgot about this guy. Look at this chongus. <laughs> oh, I did like that guy. Yeah. He's the only mushroom I liked. He's a good mushroom. Good mushroom. He's a good. Shoots fumes. Oh yeah, screen doors. You're still going. I thought you were gonna finish that level. Oh no 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 no. Uh, yeah, that was just gonna next level, so I can go back to the game. Oh wait, no. Oh, sorry, my bad. Main menu. Oh, I haven't unlocked the mini games. No. Okay. <laughs> um. So that was Plants vs Zombies. I guess we'll play a bit more of that. Um. I I'd be if we finish this, I'll, I'll be like, wow, we picked the perfect game. Um. But yeah, <laughs> it'll probably be sometime next week, maybe farther in the future, because like we got a we have a whole like move and stuff coming up. But this was just a test. It was just to have fun and i feel like it's gone okay i don't think we're gonna like re-edit this or anything um i don't i i mean i don't know how ren feels about it i guess i'll find out when i end the stream but um <laughs> <laughs> we end the stream and like she's immediately like it was terrible I i'm gonna it. be like yeah delete it that's delete never it. gonna be then, that's never gonna see the light of another day but then that means that we'll have ne not be talking to anyone think about all the people we'll be inspiring with these words <laughs> Unless you can tell yet, uh, it's 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 one a.m. for me. 
<laughs> oh my god. Yeah, streams will probably not be this late. It's just a time zone thing, but it's been fun, you know? Um, we're having fun. And uh, yeah, the book sounds so cool. Honestly, I should start giving these a read. Um, but it's I just feel like it's better when you talk about it because you're so passionate. Um, no, but if you read it, then you could both be passionate. True. Well, would, mm, what am yeah. I passionate about? I'm not passionate about books unless it's the Charlie Bone series. All right, go out and read Charlie Bone and the Blue Serpent? The Silver Serpent? I can't the second one where there's time travel it's a there's a great book series i think i haven't i haven't read them in over a decade but that was like my first thing of like a book series i was passionate about as a child um a book series i'm passionate about currently is uh scott Ari pleasant everyone go read that uh the second book's not great but the, the rest of them are great, amazing so um okay uh lovely seeing you uh, and if you're watching this from the future Please s s type something in the comments, giving us some kind of uh, information about the stock market so we can really hedge our bets. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, love you all. Good night. Good night.